Um, who finished milestone one and understand all the checkboxes? Keep your hands up. Come on. <laughs> Do you want to go back to week one? <laughs> who keep, if you look at week two, you understand week two stuff? If, do this if you're not sure, yeah? You're like, uh, week two, I don't know. Milestone three. Milestone three, you know where to decide. The client at uh, server side is a received method in messages. Uh, and then client side is a received, right? In the messages coffee. Good. You all have, have finished milestone three? You all can understand the screenshot here showing the relationship, right? So I teach you um, sort of from very basic here. Technically, these two guys uh, can chat with each other over console, you know, right? The console is like, hey, you can define a function. Here it's like, hey, send a message. You can make it shorter by a function, right? And this guy receive it because this, the one on the left sent to the server, the send server sent to everyone. So we learn to start to make the content better. Uh, in this milestone, we only do hello like this. In the later milestone, we can send the entire diff, right? Render the message. So broadcast news, new messages right, in messages controller create. So I show you guys how, imagine normally, client submit HTTP, HTTP to server, and then all the other people don't know, right? You just need to add one line in your controller which is what? Broadcast, with where's the controller code? Um, here, if the message save, then you just broadcast like this, right? We learned something interesting here, render message. So I'm not using the view at all, but I can use the view code. So uh, this is a method you can take anywhere. That's why I told you guys to write this in messages controller. Later, just copy it over to messages channel. In, so this code, you can open Rails console and then type it in Rails console, right? This is a class method, so you can do it anywhere. You know, Rails console and then copy and paste, so you can see exactly what it looks like, right? Yeah. Except it has to be very specific. In the view, you can just say render at messages. In Rails console, you. Uh oh. <laughs> okay, this one. Um, whoop, I'm not sure what I'm doing there. Okay, Rails console. Sorry. Okay, this line, right? Back to here. Okay, paste. Why does it crash? Undefined, obviously. Uh, this this line this line application controller render and then you just say this message you say message that last for example you see this is your partial all written out for you right so with this now um, messages controller after you save you do this then mouse the next milestone is like can you skip messages controller can you just do it with messages channel. So that's the next milestone here, right? So first, it's a different kind of form. That's why in the end you have this, uh, you know, you have these two forms. Uh, why is 3,000 uh, 3, not working? Oh, I did it at 4,000. <laughs> uh, okay. And then I restarted it because I'm very dumb. All right. You see, I put both of these forms here for you to prepare, uh, to compare. Right? Let's look at the difference between them. Yes. The first one, how does it know where to go? It's under form and then you see action. Right? Action slash messages and then post. The second one is this one. I didn't declare anything technically in lecture. I'll show you. You can just use this element, input, and then you do the on event key up and where the user press enter, right? This is a different way. I put it in the form, and if you have a button submit, the user can click on it or you can press enter. They all will send the form submit event. So this form has this text, right? When you press enter, where does it go? Where does it go? 
it normally it will try to go to this action something, but there's no action, so it will submit to itself. But in um, well, this is your channel, and then there's a what's that message is here. But after the page load, I say take this form, and then I assign a new event to it. I say if this form submit, okay. If this form submit, then I'm just printing here. Prevent default. Don't submit it to HTTP. Everything is stopped at the client, right? And now you can do more things. You say, oh well, you try to submit this, right? Uh, I'm going to get the fee the value. So this is the jQuery syntax. You get the parent. You click on the parent, and then you find the input element here. You get the value, but you put it in the params. You create your own params. So imagine if you have your username, you or you know maybe location or chat room or something. You can maybe add extra information here, right? So in this case, it's just one field, so it's a body. So I'm sending this whole thing as the params. You guys didn't get to the last milestone, uh, the next one, which is refactor. This is how I refactor. There's no more dot send. I change everything to very nice uh, API. App dot messages dot create, and then you send the client sender params. Yeah, how does this create work? It's just an extra method. So no longer use receive and receive, right? Create here and say, hey, call me the create method on the server side messages channel. So this line, line nine over here. So let's see the order, right? You press something, you say, hey, and then look at this guy, right? Press enter here. Stop submitting. So that's line three. And then you say, uh, and then it's sending over socket. That's line eight, and then line nine. Yeah? And look at the rail server. Line nine is, it goes straight to the create method in messages channel. That's line nine, yeah. So this line nine down down here go to uh, this 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 method go to line fourteen here. Line fourteen call line fifteen. Line fifteen go to that lock user saw, and then I go to um, channel message channel. There perform create. It will perform this method. Okay. You see how I move this whole thing out of received? Because you may want to delete, you may want to receive, you may want to do a notification. So there's a create, and it's just a params like normal. So I say, hey, if the someone call create, I will call create over here, same method. And I say do message, blah, blah, right? If the message can save, then you broadcast, okay? So no longer uh, HTTP, which is form, go to slash action in the form, right? Uh, at the form action attributes, and then it will go to your routes. In the routes, you say, ah, slash messages, go to messages controller and create action, and then go back. Channel is what? Ah, JavaScript, and then send something using app dot, you know, this, this thing, Add that messages, and you can say that create. This is the uh, create action. You can send set up up here. So JavaScript called directly to the channel, and then the channel basically just take the data which you receive. So where's the channel code? Take the data and create it. Now the channel. There's no rendering, right? Instead of rendering, you just say you broadcast to everyone. So you can render to more than one person, right? So that's what the server can do. Controller can only render to one person. Channel can render to a lot of people. I'll just send you some string you can do something about, yeah? In the, if you're really lazy, you can still tell the controller to broadcast line nine here. So that's a lazy way, right? But it's, it's, it's just too many concepts. You go to rouse, you go to controller, then you go to channel, that's too much. So this is the, lazy way but the 
the good way is this create method okay so how do you implement delete really simple when you you uh, read this this line over here create um, and, and make sure you look at the gif Cre let's say if you do delete right add a delete button when you click on the delete button let's say next to the message when you click on delete what did you do you tell the link right message is here let's implement delete here's the delete button but so you can say link to delete okay I don't even need to go anywhere you know I don't care I'm gonna ex intercept this guy right so this is delete here there's a delete button somewhere there. if you click on this delete where should it go you have to tell it in this JavaScript file you say if inside this message you click on the link Right, so you can do this inside the message diff up here. You click on this link, the delete link. Then you're gonna call the function, right? There, inside here you say message dot delete. Let's say you know you can say message ID. How do you get the message ID? Message ID is maybe this element dot data message ID. How do you get this ID? I so you guys just do a data message ID up here message ID it becoming it's becoming clearer right so how do you implement it first go here and define you know event here so you do console.log deleting right so you can pass you, you know you can pass in any element there to uh, to detect and then it will call the delete method. Uh oh. Is it JavaScript or is it JavaScript? So that's why uh, I cannot do this function thing, right? So coffee is just like that. Yeah? Is it enough? Unmatch. Oh, is this. Okay. And then let's see, huh? If you click delete. <coughs> Why? So uh, down. Why? Hey, let's look at the error. Undefined up here. Message dot id. Oh, it's not a. It's inside a partial. So no one caught this error. I'm sad. All right, let's delete it. Okay, let's look. If you click delete here, it will. Normally, you know, I want to add a class name called delete here, but it's okay. It will catch the thing and print. Okay, deleting. Let's say deleting, right? And then this is what I want. Cannot read this property because there's no app message delete yet. So, how do I do it? I need to go implement this. Where do I go, guys? JavaScript channel. And then in here, hey, easy. Delete message ID, yeah, or you can just say data, and then you say perform delete on the back end, and then you can say message ID is message ID. Does it make sense? You just send an object to the server. So after I send this delete, then what, what do I get? I click again. Well, let's try, huh? Click. <laughs> I need to refresh this. All right, I implemented the delete method, right? So I should be able to call it, right? Click. I hate you. Uh, did I type the word delete correctly? Vendor. All right, so it's click. I haven't clicked yet, and then this whole thing is, I think it's, uh, so I'm gonna click anyway. All right. Deleting this method cannot read property of undefined. Uh oh. Oh, messages. Oh my god. Messages down here because it's an uh, undefined guy. So, where's my other browser? It's still running. All right. Ready? You can clear it and click delete. 
messages that it is not a function. It's a function up here, right? I think it's not loaded properly. Did I type the word delete properly? Yeah? Perform delete and then pass in the data of the script. And then is it going to delete? If I click this, uh, it's going to index. Well, this function right now is still clicking. I don't like that. Uh, you can also do event prevent default again. If you want to prevent it from executing uh, dot messages dot delete. Yeah, so slow. Is that click app messages dot it's not that create is here if you type it huh okay. everything is just broken what is a huh what is a oh you're clicking on the link oh okay. that's okay yeah, yeah. but for some reason this app messages is not Huh? Oh, all these spaces is wrong. Thank you. Did you see that one space up there? I hope that's the error. Yes, it's the error. Click! Oh. Deleting! <laughs> and then what happens? Back end, back end. Back end. Unable to process. You see, each time you just read an error and keep calm. So how do you do this? <laughs> Unable to process this guy. <laughs> right. So app channel. This guy. It's easy now. What is the delete? What is the parameter? Message ID, message ID here, right? So actually he, here is still data. And then message dot find what? Data message ID. Is that right? Yep. And message dot destroy. Right? And if probably it will destroy, and then you can broadcast again. And what do you broadcast? What do you broadcast? Huh? Then you can say, maybe remember last time, you can actually pass in the message ID. So you can know what to delete. You can, you know, maybe you can say delete, uh, you know, action delete. So I, I'll pass in the whole thing, okay? So in Ruby, the second argument here is uh, you can use this argument, coffee script as well. You can use the braces or not. It's optional, right? But I'm passing maybe, you know, action is delete. And then message ID is what? That, that one, right? Message.id. It's still the same thing. Yeah? So how do you deal with this guy deleting? Go to receive. So last time you only handle new messages. So now if data dot action equal delete. delete, then what do you do? You find the element that start with the word message. And then data dot message ID. You find that element and then you remove it. Does it make sense? Yes. And then if not, well, obviously this is coffee script, so it's so much easier to type. And else, technically you don't even need you know the, the braces. So let's just have the braces anyway. Else, and maybe you can do this guy, right? So maybe just keep it super clean like that. Yeah. Does it make sense? Yes. So obviously, if it if you need to uh, debug more, like why is it not deleting my element? Then you can go and print a uh, new console. Okay. All right. Uh oh. Why is it not deleting? Okay. All right. So then you have to do console that log client receive. Client receive action delete message ID. 33 this is good you can also look at the log do not execute command 
Ah, uh, it's failing. The delete action is failing. Why? Data message ID. So something is has to do with the hash. Huh? So could not execute this. You sending data message ID. It looks fine, right? Couldn't find message ID. Oh, okay. I already deleted it. Nothing else. Let's try again. It's just mainly the view is not doing it properly, huh? So let's look at the lock very carefully. Click delete. It go to delete, and then it go trans. It transfer to the thing, and then it receive it. Did it disappear? All right. So if you click again, then obviously it fail. So we just need to fix the JavaScript, and then we can go home. Which is here, client receive. So action delete, is it correct? So you can say console.log, blah, 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 right? The reason it doesn't delete because I leave it there. There's no ID, right? So how do you fix this? Not here, huh? Where do you fix it? Messages partial here. You need to give this guy an ID. Remember that ID thing? You can do a DOM ID. That is the short version. So, when you run this, look at all the IDs. Beautiful, beautifully slow. All right, do you see this underscore ID thing? Now you can remove anything you like because it's an ID. So let's click, delete, 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 delete. Does it make sense? Yeah, so you can see that the code is very well uh, separated, right? You can define more action if you like because the whole thing is just some data. In the, you know, when you first deal with it, everything is new message, so you just append or prepend. But if you can want to handle more, just pass some information. Congratulations.